Hey Z Stars, it's your girl Zar, and I'm back with another video. Today I'm bringing you the second installment of your most frequently asked Grease questions. Now I don't want to waste your time, let's just get straight into this video. If you haven't seen the first installment, I'm going to link it in the top right corner so you can watch it prior to watching this video or after. Just let it open up in another window. Now of course before we start, please don't forget to do these four simple things. Be sure to thumbs up this video, it lets YouTube know you enjoy this type of content. Comment down below, let me know your thoughts share your ideas with me ask your questions be sure to also share this video with your friends and your loved ones and last but never ever least subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you know every time i post a new video okay let's get right into it <music> If you're not already, make sure you're following me on Instagram via Efik Zara, E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A. -E there you can see all my lovely pics and interact with me. And be sure to also follow me on Twitter via Efik Zara, the same E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A. -E there I talk to you all, I share my thoughts, and we're going to be doing a lot of giveaways very soon, so stay tuned. Girl, I love you. This video is it. Question. I don't have a sensitive or itchy scalp usually. I'm thinking to use your tea tree and water concoction. The Shea Moisture Low Porosity Can Dish, which truly is the best, and do grow hair grease. Do you think it's still worth adding in the Sulfur 8 as extra scalp protection? Or will the remainder of your routine suffice? Again, love you. Aww. So if you don't have any scalp issues, I personally don't think you need to seek out a grease that's dedicated to scalp health. Um, but you might consider using it because sulfur has some growth properties. So I mean, that's a reason why you could use it. But actually, if you really don't have any scalp issues, if your scalp is not dry, then you probably shouldn't be putting anything on it. That probably means that it's producing enough sebum. And if you put anything on it, it could actually upset your scalp and aggravate it. So scratch that. Don't put anything on your scalp if you don't have scalp issues, if you're not suffering from dryness, if you don't have dandruff, if you don't have dry scalp and itchiness. Please, what do you edit your videos with? Do you advise grease on hair even in the winter? I actually advise grease on hair more often in the winter because the winter is very cold and typically very dry. So you want to make sure that you're sealing the moisture in and protecting your hair from nature. Like really, that's just it. Now in the winter, I can't even leave my hair out. That's how much my hair dislikes winter. I need to tuck my hair completely away. If you insist on wearing your hair in some capacity, grease is going to do a lot to protect your hair and ultimately prevent splits and breakage for much longer than your average sealant. So scalp and hair health questions, green heart or another green emoji, the heading, and let me know what else you want to ask down below. Let's help each other out. If you have anything to share with anybody, please do that also. Many people are telling me that oiling my scalp is good, while others are telling me to leave my scalp alone. What should I do to help my hair? That's actually a great question. Now, it's kind of a trick instruction because oiling and or greasing your scalp is good and bad. It really depends upon your own scalp environment. So if your scalp is dry, chances are you need to apply some water and slap some grease or some oil on that scalp, honey. Like, do that ASAP. If your scalp is oily already, please do not put anything on it. It will upset your scalp's natural sebum balance and cause you lots of issues. It's like trying to use an oil or a very occlusive moisturizer on oily skin. If you have oily skin, you want to use something lightweight on your skin. If you have dry skin, you want to use something very heavy to keep your skin hydrated. It's a similar principle, and of course your scalp is skin, so why wouldn't the same apply to your scalp? Do you think grease is better for mixed hair? I used grease on my daughter's hair when she was young, and her hair was in better condition than it is now. She says that grease is too heavy, but her hair is dry and breaks off, so not growing very much. So y'all, I put a disclaimer on that video, basically stating that <laughs> I have obviously changed my opinion. Now, I was not necessarily wrong in that video because if you're using petroleum jelly products improperly, 
then your hair is going to suffer. But if you're properly moisturizing your hair prior to applying petrolatum, then your hair is going to be super hydrated for a longer period of time. So it's really up to you whether or not you want to use grease. I personally am a grease stan at this point. I cannot live without grease. It's a staple in my regimen. But if you do decide to use grease, please ensure that your hair is properly washed, conditioned, deep conditioned, treated, moisturized, etc. prior to applying the grease. That's extremely important. Now drop that purple emoji and that is grease for me if you still have questions as to whether or not grease is indeed for you. Can I use grease on 4C low porosity hair? Simple answer, yes. My hair is low porosity. My hair is type 4. Use that grease, honey bunny. Use it. So use it to your heart's content. It's going to help the moisture stay in your hair for much longer. It's great. Hey Zara, thanks for this. I have high porosity, fine, forcey hair that's prone to tangles, especially when I shampoo. I see that you recommend grease, but you have low porosity hair. You also use sulfate shampoos, which I find to be very drying. Could you recommend a hair routine for me, please? Thanks. Is grease good for high porosity hair? Now these are actually really great questions. And to answer as concisely as possible, yes, grease is phenomenal for high porosity hair. Now let me tell you why. High porosity hair is obviously more susceptible to relinquishing moisture because the cuticle is more porous, really. Grease is really beneficial because it's highly occlusive. And the more grease you add, the more occlusive it becomes. So if you're using a product like grease, you're guaranteed pretty much to keep the moisture in your hair for a much longer time. Now, if you have high porosity hair, I highly recommend you watch my regimen building video. I've probably already linked it in the cards in the top right, but if I haven't, it will be linked. Check that out so you can figure out how to build your own regimen because that video applies to everyone, including people with highly porous hair, people with relaxed hair, people with natural hair, etc., etc., etc. But I'm just going to give you a quick regimen in this video. Now, if I had high porosity hair, I would probably cleanse with Castile soap. Castile soap could be very, very mild and it's not as stripping and it can be diluted very easily. I might also cleanse with maybe a sulfate free shampoo. Um, I like Shea Moisture's black soap shampoo. That's really, really great. I love that. And it's quite moisturizing or a moisturizing shampoo. So those are some options if you're having trouble keeping moisture in your hair while you're cleansing it. Now, when it comes to moisturizing, I would probably use my Opia Naturals, which I already use because it's pH balance. You want something that's going to actually close the cuticle as much as possible and make your hair less porous. So that's really going to help. And I'd probably use a thicker moisturizer, something that's also going to fill in the cuticle. Now I'd also protein treat more often, probably on a weekly or bi-monthly basis. And I would use a really occlusive grease. Now I'd specifically use a grease that has protein in it, again, to help fill my cuticle. Hair that is highly porous or hair that is more normal porosity, those hair types really, really love protein. And protein is super beneficial if you have highly porous hair. Now you can check out my products video if you have high porosity hair because there are some products that I use that are also really phenomenal for high porosity hair. Now if you guys want a video, let me know because I have enough knowledge about hair to make a video on what would work for high porosity hair. And my sister, her hair I don't think is high porosity, but it is normal porosity. So products that work for her don't work for me and products that she uses would most likely benefit high porosity hair. So let me know. Now if you do want a high porosity hair video, drop a white emoji down below. Feel free to also include your questions so we can further this discussion. Is hair grease only good for type 4 hair? I have 3C curls and I really want to try it, but I'm scared that it might be too heavy. Would you recommend for me to use the Dugro Mega Thick Hair Grease on 3B, 3C hair? I'm scared it will weigh my hair down. Is grease okay for 3C hair? Now, grease is great for pretty much any hair type. If your hair is straighter, it's probably not going to be that good for your hair um, because I'd imagine that your scalp produces a bit of sebum and it's able to move down the hair shaft. Uh, so there's that to consider. And if your hair is straighter, a lighter product like an oil would probably be better or mineral oil. But grease is ultimately good for all curly to kinky hair type. The type of grease you use is dependent upon your hair type as a whole. 
So your curl pattern will likely accept grease, but you need to determine what's going to not weigh down your hair, what's going to actually seal in the moisture, what's not going to cause breakage or make your hair feel greasy. You know what I mean? So with a lot of greases, they have light alternatives. There's a light version of the Sulfur 8. There's a light version of the Dugro, and I'm sure that there's a light version of Blue Magic and other types of grease. So if your hair is a looser texture, then you should probably be using a lighter version of a grease if you want the same benefit and of course if you're not heavy-handed you should get the same benefits of grease without the greasy feeling on 3b3c hair if your hair is coarse that is if the circumference of your hair is larger then i would say that you can use dugro mega thick but if you have fine hair strands then you should probably use the dugro light and i'm going to link both in the description box down below but ultimately grease is fine for 3c hair again i think that the type of grease one is going to use is more dependent upon the thickness of each hair strand, not so much the curl pattern or the density of the hair. Do you think grease is better for mixed hair? I used grease on my daughter's hair when she was young and her hair was in better condition than it is now. She says that grease is too heavy, but her hair is dry and breaks off, so not growing very much. Now that's a bit of a loaded question because though I understand where you're coming from, I feel like it can be misconstrued because hair on biracial or multiracial people is pretty much all across the board. You can be biracial, black, and white and literally have 4C hair that's kinkier than mine. So, I mean, I think that we should bear that in mind. But ultimately, I think what this person is asking is about a certain type of texture that is typically perceived as mixed hair so maybe a silkier hair texture with a looser curl pattern and i would say ultimately yes if you saw that your daughter's hair was successful and thriving with grease usage and now is like a hot mess then probably yes i mean the proof is in the pudding right and you have your own anecdotes to prove that grease was working well for her hair so i think that you could go back to it if she feels it's too heavy maybe switch to a lighter alternative so a light version of the grease that you were using previously. You could also try a mineral oil, which is a liquid byproduct of the crude oil refining process. So that's a great alternative to petroleum jelly in the event that the petroleum jelly is too heavy for your hair. It's as occlusive as petroleum jelly and more occlusive than oil. Now, if you have questions or comments regarding looser textures and grease, please drop a brown heart or another brown emoji down below and comment. <laughs> what are you guys experience with grease and relaxed hair? What about greasing my scalp with keratin treated hair? We are not supposed to use sulfates. I would love to use grease again for my dry scalp. Well, I mean, my hair was relaxed back in 2009, and grease, God, grease was my life. Grease made my hair so soft. So I think that grease is excellent on relaxed hair. Now, if you're trying to press your hair out, obviously you're not gonna use no grease, it's gonna weigh it down. But if you're just like trying to protect your hair, then grease is phenomenal. And my hair was really long when I was relaxed, like super long and really pretty, so. I think grease is fantastic for relaxed hair. Now, when it comes to keratin treated hair, I didn't know y'all aren't supposed to use sulfates, but it makes sense because you don't want the proteins to leave the hair. So I think it's fine to use grease. I mean, you can use a soap instead to rinse it out. So I think it's fine to use grease. To cleanse the hair, definitely use a soap. I used grease, then got cornrows, and I plan to leave it on for two weeks, but can I still moisturize my hair in between? Because you mentioned earlier that after grease, moisture can't get in and it can't leave either. Now, if you have cornrows in and you've moisturized your hair properly, and greased your hair and your scalp, you probably won't need to re-moisturize, it's only two weeks. And your hair is already in a position to lose less moisture, especially if your ends are tucked into the cornrow pattern. So I, I don't think you need to re-moisturize. Now, if you absolutely want to, I would recommend only re-moisturizing your scalp, but you don't need to re-moisturize your hair in my humble opinion. I usually have my hair in braids for a long time and sometimes I do wash it but it mess it up. I see some people say it's best to wash every two weeks but if I spray my hair with water and then grease my scalp, will that work for moisture? Also, how would I wash my hair in braids without it messing up? 
I plan on keeping kinky twists in my hair for two months. Can I use grease on my scalp during those two months? Won't that cause buildup? I don't plan on washing my scalp and hair during those two months because I don't wash when I do twists or box braids, only when I do cornrows. How do you use grease when you have extensions such as weaves and braids or twists? Personally, I just put water on my scalp. He has my watering tea tree oil mixture and then I'll grease my scalp with my sulfur 8 mix or my normal sulfur 8. Y'all can find that video in the cards. But um, yeah, I don't like to stress myself. Yes, it does cause buildup. I mean, you can't really avoid that and your scalp is not going to be clean. But at least it keeps the itchies at bay and keeps my scalp quite healthy even when it's in the style. Now, I haven't left a protective style in for more than two months in a long time. So by the time I take my hair down, my scalp is ready to be deeply cleansed. And I'm fine with that. Um, if I absolutely need to wash my hair when it's in a protective style, if I feel that my scalp is like crying out for help, I definitely will. Now, if y'all want me to make a video on how to do that, please leave a comment down below and drop a flag emoji. I know we're using lots of emojis, <laughs> but drop a flag emoji if you want that because that's literally a separate topic. But um, yeah, that's how I approach keeping my scalp healthy while I'm doing protective styles. Now again, you don't have to wash your hair if it's in braids or other protective styles. I think it's easier to wash hair when it's in a weave. I always wash my hair when it's in a weave, but I haven't worn a weave in years because at this point I just wear wigs. I like my scalp to really be exposed to the air and I also like to minimize the possibility of having mildew just ravage my hair and my scalp. So I think wigs are the way to go personally. But yeah, when it comes to braids or extensions like that, I don't worry about washing my hair until I remove the style. Had hair breakage, stayed away from grease, and it didn't help. Started back using blue magic and noticed a difference. I'm growing dreads now and don't know what to do. Should I still use grease since it's been working? Oh, and go Ravens! How do you use grease on locks? Does it unlock them or does it build up badly in the locks? How do you clean them or is it not a good idea? Please help, my locks are so dry. Okay, you know what? I think it's fine to use grease in locks, but it's one of those things, if you're going to use grease in your locks, you definitely have to shampoo your hair. And I think every once in a while you need to use a chelating shampoo. That's super important. That's going to remove every ounce of buildup from your hair. Now, I think that's important for everybody. And I need to find one here in Nigeria that I can use because my hair needs a good clarify. You know, I just need a reset button, definitely. So yeah, I think chelating shampoos are phenomenal. And I think that everybody should use them from time to time. More so if you have luck. I don't know about apple cider vinegar rinses and stuff like that. Apple cider vinegar and baking soda. I mean, I don't know much about having locks, so I'd have to do research and actually see if that helps. But I'm about things that are scientifically proven to work. So chelating shampoos, maybe a good sulfate shampoo. If you're not a fan of sulfates, black soap is really, really deeply clarifying, especially if you're using the right one. So you might experiment. If your locks are very dry, try grease, but make sure you're moisturizing your hair very well prior to using the grease. And also, again, make sure that you're cleansing properly when you're using something that occlusive. Does your hair feel greasy? Does it soil everything? How do you keep your pillow dry at night? How do you keep your pillow from being greasy or having grease and oil stains? Or maybe I'm just too heavy handed. Now, when my hair's in a fro, chances are I don't have a lot of grease on it, probably just the very end. And even then, I try to keep it light. When my hair is in twists, I use a lot of grease, but how do I keep my pillow dry? I like to use a scarf and a bonnet. So I'll use my scarf, tie that on, and I'll use my bonnet and put that over the scarf. So it actually keeps my pillow quite dry and I don't get any grease or oil stains because my bonnet is made out of silk. If you're using a silk bonnet, chances are nothing is going to penetrate that bonnet once you tie up your hair. So I think that's a really great way to keep your garments, your pillows, everything soil free when you're using grease. Now, does my hair feel greasy? Um, not typically because by the time I'm wearing a fro or any other loose style, my hair has had time to really set. So the petrol latum on my hair is not as difficult to deal with you know what i mean 
Does your hair feel greasy and doesn't soil everything? That's a great question and actually the answer to that would be no because my hair is tucked away 90% of the time. I really don't wear my hair out unless I'm filming. Yeah, that's just it. <laughs> I really can't come and kill myself. So no, my hair doesn't really feel greasy because when I do wear it out, I tend to be a bit light-handed with the grease. And then aside from that, I still use my other sealants, which tend to evaporate a bit more quickly. And then aside from that, when my hair is finally free, the grease has had time to really settle in. So you can't feel it as much if you do touch my hair. Okay, y'all, so we're at the end of this particular video, and don't forget, there's still a part three coming up, so stay tuned for that. If you've made it this far, please be sure to drop a blue emoji down below. All my OGs know what it is. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so appreciative to have you all here, and please don't forget to do those four simple things. Be sure to comment down below. Share this video. Please share it with your friends and your loved ones. Please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, and last but never ever least, subscribe to my channel and turn all of your notifications on so you know when i post i've got a lot of exciting stuff in store for you all and i can't wait to share it with you thank you once again and i'll see you in the next video